king of the show which finally decides once and for all what is the king of everything like what's the king of hot drinks tea what's the king of rice annika <laughs> two down and we'll be crowning more king ofs or your money back each week two guests will be helping me with these difficult decisions which i will record in this my little red book this little red book is vitally important because it's for my kids It'll finally mean I'm passing on something positive to them rather than just webbed feet and astigmatism. <laughs> I think I'm joking. If you want to stick your oar in, then uh, Twitter or go to our website. Later, I'll be joined by the stupendous Jack Whitehall. But first, please welcome the amazing Lorraine Kelly. <laughs> King of outfits. Oh, thank you. <laughs> May I just say this to you? Because you seem adorable. Right. Possibly too adorable to be opinionated. Or do you have? Oh, no. I, um, I have lots and lots of very strong opinions. You'll be surprised. Good girl. <laughs> Are you ready to yes. put the first one in the book? I am. You know how serious this I is. I do. We can't get lost in fun. OK. We can't just have a good time Fine. and not worry about it. All right, OK. Right? I, it's I like understand. having sex when you're not on the pill. You've got to focus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. I remember that. Do you understand? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Withdraw <laughs> now. <laughs> I, number one, I'm obviously not very good at saying that. And number two, <laughs> that's not going in the show. <laughs> First subject for the book, King of Uniforms. <laughs> If you're alone, right. you are at the airport and somebody says, in you come, <sighs> Lorraine, I've got a seat for you, and he's dressed like this. Is that exciting for you on any level? <laughs> not really. It's too suave for me. Yes. It's not rough enough for me. <laughs> Shall I tell you what I would like? Go. A zoologist. <laughs> OK. Is that wrong? <laughs> I'm just saying that if I'm in... <laughs> Well, you <laughs> say we have to turn it up a level in the bedroom. Oh, okay. okay. What I'm saying to you is, and if you had to both dress up, what I'd like is to pretend to be a heron or something. A heron? <laughs> what do you a not want to be a heron? Why is nobody with me? A heron's got really good sex life. So they do they do? I it? don't know, but they just stand like that, ready. Oh. <laughs> And he would be dressed like Bellamy, almost, binoculars. Right. He'd do the voice. I'm like, is it? I'm, a, I'm alone. You're alone. <laughs> would you do dressing up? Let's say your husband comes home, it's his birthday. Yeah. Would, you, would you be... Yeah, you see? Is he here? Would you be greeting him like that? We don't need to dress up at this stage in the game. No. Maybe a few years down the line. Yeah. We might have to. But at the moment, we're, we're OK, like, just ourselves. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was when I went to New York. My boss was in his office and I, and I sort of kicked the door down and I stood there and went, assume the position, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that, I'll <laughs> give birth. <laughs> but it was really embarrassing because he just he sort of looked at me, you know, over his specs like that and he said, would you like to meet our new managing director? <laughs> <laughs> And that was the first time he'd ever met me. Don't mind me. I, know. I might look like Lorraine Kelly. I'm actually Best Kate Garraway. No, Thank you so much. <laughs> We've got a fabulous photo of you. We didn't know whether this was a uniform. Here we go. Oh! <laughs> it was the 80s! It was the 80s! You look divine! Do you know, I've been out like that, and I think it's terrible that my friends never told me that I looked a complete tit. Look at that. <laughs> You've got a brilliant fan club. They love you on all levels, but they also really want you to wear rubber, leather, they do. fishnets. It's yes. not like, oh, we think you're brilliant. Please, mm. you know, what shampoo do you use? It's like, will you, will you promise me that you are not wearing pants on Thursday? <laughs> Funny enough, they send me uniforms, like French-made uniforms. Funny that. Which I recycle. I don't give them, you know, I don't wear them. But you're very sweet to them because I've seen some of the, <laughs> like, I don't know, most people would go, I, I'm deleting you <laughs> from my life. Don't contact me again. But instead they go, you could wear latex like the Doctor Who outfit, holding a whip, scratching yourself. And you yeah. go, oh, but it might be a bit hot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just might get a little warm. So it's honestly the sweetest girl on the planet. Anybody else would shower for half a day <laughs> with rock salt. 
<laughs> Can I tell you what I think might be one of my uh, king of uniforms? Right, okay. here we go. Your cupcake, Miss Winkle. Oh! <laughs> Thank you so much. You can go back down. Oh, it's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Dan. A bellboy. Is that the king of uniforms? No. no. It's an immediate no. Oh, no, 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 no. Is this the king of uniforms? No, 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 no. no. Best audience ever, clapping an archbishop's hat <laughs> for no reason. What do you think, then, is the king of uniforms? It would be the fireman. OK. Oh, yeah. But, 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 but. They've changed the uniform in some fire brigades and it's red. I'm not having that. <laughs> it's got to be blue, right? right? It's got to be blue. He's got to wear his trousers. He's also got to not have anything on top apart from the, bl the braces. But the braces have got to be down. He's got to bare chest, yeah. braces down, trousers, big boots, holding a puppy. <laughs> <laughs> a very small puppy that might be slightly singed. <laughs> <laughs> but fireman, got to be fireman. All right, so I love how specific you are. The king of uniforms is inviting it in. It's fireman! <laughs> Definitively, what is the king of everything? Have we got it right so far? I think we have, but you can tweet us anyway with your opinions. Please welcome my next guest. It's the amazing Jack Whitehall. Yeah. Thank you oh, so much for thanks coming. Thanks for having me. I was really pleased to hear that Lorraine has weird fans as well. That gave me such hope. Because <laughs> I've actually had a really big issue that's happened to me recently and I'm finding it very hard to deal with because I joined Twitter and do the tweeting. Yeah, yeah. Fine, yeah. And a guy has tweeted me every day for the past four months telling me about his poos. <laughs> and I have no interest in his poos. I never asked about his poos. Just all of a sudden, they said, and, and really detailed as well. Like there was one the other day saying, I've just laid down a dead otter. Like, that is... <laughs> interest in it at all and then about two weeks ago it turned out his phone had broken and he didn't tweet about his booze and I was suddenly like oh god I hope he's okay <laughs> <laughs> have you been back there thinking god those girls have got it right I mean the king of uniforms where do you stand on that fireman with the puppy? well I mean I nearly turned backstage I mean he yeah. was quite handsome <laughs> but then I don't see the uniform thing as being a sexy thing necessarily have you ever been with a girl who suddenly said I am going to dress as a Polish reporter or something? Um, <laughs> Every night I asked, and she refused to dress as a Polish reporter. I've had one girl who was quite into sort of like dressing up and so. And I, I'm not into the sex dressing up. I'm quite English, I think, when it comes to sex. I like sort of a bit of sex in the dark for a couple of minutes, and then I'll roll over, <laughs> assume the fetal position, and cry. Like, that's nice. <laughs> that's how I like it. I like any. Who's not sweet? One time I come back and she dresses the French maid, and I was like, oh, well, my room was a tit when I left, so maybe that's been cleaned. And <laughs> she was like, oh, tell me I've been a bad girl. I was like, you've been a bad girl. <laughs> Why have I been a bad girl? I was like, I didn't, oh, you deleted Master Chef from the Sky Plus. That was pretty bad. <laughs> Uh, we're now ready for the next uh, category. Are you all right with this? Yeah. All right, let's go. It's King of, this is very good fun, Chefs. <laughs> Have a look. Here's a list of some chefs. 
Heston Blumenthal, the sciencey one with the dry ice. Nigella, naughty food. Gordon fucking Ramsay. Raymond Blanc, me. Rick Stein, bit fishy. Hugh Fernley Whittingstall, great otter recipes. Celia Smith, loves a roast, according to the Norwich City players. Anthony Royal Thompson, tiny, tiny neck. But who is the king of chefs? Truthfully, I think it might be my Aunt Sally. Where do you stand on Heston? Is that the one that puts snails in porridge? Yeah. No. I have bad experiences with Heston. Why? What happened? They bring you the food, like, course after course. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's one of those really annoying, pretentious restaurants. It's like, just put it on a plate. <laughs> like, I, I eat at home. I have about 90% of my meals on plates. Plates have always done absolutely fine for yeah. me. Yeah. This is like someone's just gone into home base and said, just get anything with a flat surface. <laughs> yeah, let's just put some sushi on a brick. And I'm eating this, this nonsense off like a bit of skirting board. <laughs> and you can pass it off as your own as well. He you makes no, all the cool true. things. That's true. That's very good comes around, oh, is this one of your that. recipes? Yeah, no. I always make dog's dick ice cream. It's like one of my favourites. <laughs> that does actually sound quite good. <laughs> I've got a uh, soundboard here. Where do we stand on this bloke? Serve it up, get it to people, tell them to eat it now. Stop yapping and get the tucker down. Jamie. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's very fast, which I love. He can be enthusiastic, he has herbs. If it wasn't for him, every, every child in the country would be fat, so... <laughs> no, that's true, and he's saving America now, so we need to give him a lot of time, because that is going to take fucking ages. <laughs> <laughs> so let's give him the benefit of the doubt for now. Where do we stand on this boat? If you sauté scallops in a non-stick pan, they won't stick! That's why it's called fucking non-stick! <laughs> About the Ramsey. Mm, I think I made you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Wouldn't it be really good if he did a whole thing without swearing? It would be really interesting, and then he would have to kind of think of other things to say. I don't know whether that would work or not. Other yeah. adjectives and things like that. Well, I think he's going to have to swear even more now. He's had so much Botox, he's not going to be able oh to. Oh my God! People he won't has. know what his emotions are unless he says, "I'm fucking nice angry." About him? No, 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 he does look really stupid. You want, you want free table at his restaurant, don't you? <laughs> Uh, no, I've got another uh, soundbite, I think, where he's not swearing. Hold oh, on. Okay. Come here, you fat mouth, little stupid bitch. Well, <laughs> Define not swearing. <laughs> he gets annoyed with the American people on the, the American version as well, yeah. which I love watching. No, that is good. And I saw a real life Gordon Ramsay moment when I, I went up to Glasgow to visit my friend. Yeah. And I was in a, it was like a greasy spoon restaurant. This is the worst waiter in Glasgow, by the way. No, Definitely. No, no, no. So I sat there and there was an American couple who walked in. Oh, American couple and they sat down at the table and the woman had her coffee and she was like um sir I'd like my free refill of coffee now and he, he literally looked at her like she'd ordered like your mum's a horse soup like it was that or something without batter and she goes uh, sir in America if you order a coffee we give you a free refill he paused he just looked at her and he goes in Glasgow we need to give a shite <laughs> <laughs> Can like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I play you who I think might be my king of chefs? I'm slightly obsessed. Here we go. My plumptious beauties. Oh. Oh, yeah. I love Nigella. She's so sexy She's the cool. way she talks. She cooks things mm. you want to eat. She just starts with butter and pasta and cake mm. and she puts it all in <laughs> in a bowl. <laughs> And then she blights fairy lights. Is she the king? Of she chefs? could well be, but it is just porn, isn't it? She's like a big, she's just got a big jammy donut. You just want to squeeze really hard. I think she's. Listen to her, we're going to Slut spaghetti. <laughs> Some like it hot, and I certainly do. <laughs> Call her Lorraine. <laughs> Fine. Where do we stand on Anthony Worrell Thompson? I am. Um, I don't know whether to say this on television. I actually uh, lost my V plates in Anthony Royal Thompson's pub restaurant. Did you? Got to oh. Anthony Royal Thompson <laughs> to an actual. Can I just confirm? Instead of virginity, you called it a V plate. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? Yeah. It was, what it was all nice. It was all like really like consensual and everything, and it was. It was, <laughs> it was a beautiful moment. <laughs> Uh, but now, whenever I see Anthony Warren Thompson's face, even though it's quite hideous, I sort of think of the time that that happened when oh, the V plates see? were taken off. Oh. <laughs> the best two minutes of my life. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, I'm sure hers. Um,
I like this man only because he sort of walks around and he cooks weird stuff. Calf's testicles have long been considered a perk. Hugh! Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, not Hugh! He's no. mad, isn't He's he? He's so casual about <laughs> stuff that you would never have. Does He's he... like, I'm making a pie today. The first thing you'll need is an owl's placenta. So, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're rejecting <No>. him. That's <laughs> 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 I think it's decision time. I think it's down to Nigella mm. Mm. and are we thinking Jamie? Jamie. Who, Jamie, Jamie. You love yeah. Jamie. Yeah. One of you can be Nigella. Okay. And one of you can Ooh. be Jamie. You should be Nigella. All right. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to pretend this is the final of MasterChef. We meant to try and sway you. I meant to do like Nigella touches, like look at me with this goose fan on my tits. <laughs> no. Yeah. I'm just going to pretend to be Greg Wallace. <laughs> Very important the way I hold the spoon. This tension is going to run and run, guys. <laughs> the king of chefs is... <sighs> Nigella, you did good in the tests. <laughs> that is like a cuddle. <laughs> Jamie, you have an enormous tongue. <laughs> But you make an amazing fish pie. The king of chefs is... <laughs> it's Nigella! Yeah. in the book. I'm next, King of Parties. <laughs> Many different kinds of parties. Before we discuss them, have a look at this. Now, I love a wedding party. Where else would you see children and 90-year-olds dancing to Chaka Demas and pliers? What about a disco? Stick on the Bee Gees, let's have a knee trembler. Work parties are perfect for letting your employer know what a photocopy of your arse looks like. As for fancy dress, put on whatever costume you like, you'll still be dressed as a moron. The highest dinner party ever was held at over 22,000 feet in Tibet, and the guests still only gave it four out of ten and come dine with me. How about a Tupperware party? Who wouldn't want to celebrate their lunchbox? And let's not forget about New Year, birthdays, bar or bat mitzvahs and sleepovers. Love any social event where you can wear your gym jams. All right. Let me start with you first, Lauren. Do you like to host a party? Well, yes, I prefer to host a party than to go to a party. And to be honest, I think the lead-up to the party is better than the party. It's just a whole bunch of people standing about and that's yeah. about it, really. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's always a wee bit of a letdown. What's the best party or the worst party you've ever hosted, Jack? Uh, when I first went to university, we decided to have a sort of big house party. We were worried about upsetting mm. the neighbours, so we decided one of the things we'd do is um, invite them all. And what became apparent was that one of the houses opposite that we'd invited was actually a halfway house for people that had been in prison <laughs> or <laughs> on quite heavy drugs. <laughs> we had no idea of this. So then the party happened. Not many of the other houses turned up, but the halfway house did. They were all there. <laughs> and there was one moment where I was just in the kitchen with this woman who, uh, she literally had like three teeth in, in, in the front of her gums. And I was talking to her. So I'm doing a history of art course. What course are you doing? She said, methadrone. I was like, oh God. <laughs> are you with me when I say that fancy dress parties are awful? Yeah. Terrible. Yeah. Am I? I? Last time I went to fancy dress party, I got in a lot of trouble because I went dressed as a chicken in a big chicken outfit. I was like, I'll be funny, you know, I'll do the chicken dance. People were like, oh, he's a lad. I didn't think that. I got really, really hammered and it ended up with my friends finding me, still dressed as a chicken, about two o'clock in the morning. I'd walked into a KFC and demanded to have my children back. <laughs> you were obsessed uh, by dressing up as uh, Robin Hood. Yeah. We have Don't Shout. Oh, oh, what's that? I, I don't know what, what that is. is. <laughs> what is that? But how cute were you? Oh, you're I think so we've cute. also got other photos. I did lots I of dressing up. Oh. Oh. Sexy fire, <laughs> mate. <laughs> Stand on a dinner party. Do I, I'm nervous of a dinner party. I've just sort of started, I think, going to dinner parties. And because I've been brought up on a diet of come dine with me, I assume now if I get invited to a dinner party, that's free range to just rifle through other people's shit. 
<laughs> and like, at some point during this evening, I'm going up to your bedroom, looking through your drawers, and I'm going to make judgments about you, stranger. Because <laughs> that's what you do. And then give them marks. Yeah, they mark them. Yeah. Christmas parties? Have you ever performed at a Christmas party? I did, um, oh, it's like... Oh, ah. oh no. <laughs> It's really hard. Hold my hand, please. Okay. <laughs> it was about two years ago, and it was a Christmas party for a group of industrial gardeners, and they were big, burly men. They had a turkey buffet at the back, which did not close when I went on to do my humour. <laughs> and at one point, I was talking to a gentleman in the front row, and he said, come here, come here, and he put me into a headlock. No. He started putting me in a headlock, and he was rubbing my head like that, and scratching my stuff. And, and I was shouting out to the bouncer, like, please come and help me. And the bouncer was laughing along as well. <laughs> they all, it must be part of his act. I was like, why the fuck would this be part of my act? <laughs> and I was, I was left there in the dressing room crying, whilst all the gardeners that had cold turkey downstairs laughing at not laughing at me. That's one thing they did not do at any point in the evening. <laughs> any semblance of a laugh. I don't even go into gardens now because I'm scared that <laughs> there's going to be a man He's waiting so to attack me. He needs us. It is adorable, Tell isn't him, he? We'll take him home. I want to take him home. We were deciding that we were going to kind of half you between us. Oh. Yeah. And you said you wanted the top half. Yeah. And I would get the bottom half. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where do we stand on surprise parties? Oh, I love surprise parties. They're the best parties, don't you think? Yeah. My mum's having a party quite soon. She, she's uh, 50 and we've tried to organise that. Your we mum's 50? Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear! Oh dear! Oh dear! Oh dear! What I said? She's gonna love that. Though. Oh, what I yeah. said about the bottom half of you? I didn't. I take it back. <laughs> <laughs> Right. At my mum's party, we were going to do it surprise, mm. and I sat down with my dad to do the list. Dad just went through and he went, no, 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 no. So we couldn't do it surprise, because the only way we could get these people to come is for my mum to call them up, because they all think my dad's a dick. <laughs> I said, the thing about the surprise parties, it's difficult to organise, because yeah. everybody has to keep it secret, it takes a while, you need a whole army to do it, because you want everybody there from all mm. walks of life. So, um, so here's the thing, Jack. Three, two, one. Surprise! <laughs> Us, who's here? It's your mum. It's my mum, my brother. So there's people here I didn't even know were still alive. <laughs> the king of parties oh. is a <laughs> surprise party. <laughs> That's all we've got time for tonight. A huge thank you to my brilliant guests, Lorraine Kelly and Jack Whitehall. Thank you for watching. <laughs>